Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at ticker symbol LFMD, that is Life MD Incorporated. We're going to see if the stock deserves to be $5.50 or if it should be higher or lower. We're going to see what institutions and hedge funds are doing. Are they adding like crazy down here or are they selling? Uh, and we'll also do some advanced charting on the think and the swim it's called think or swim LFMD. All right. Mm, I've done this one before, so I'm actually excited to come back and see what, what has happened. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this party started. So uh, we can see the stock was $12.30 some cents. We got a gap down and it's been going down ever since. Does the stock deserve to be going through a 50% correction within six months? Uh, we're gonna find out. Uh, if the company has gotten stronger, I think we might have an arbitrage opportunity. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the bigger picture as we always do. Okay, so uh, if you are like me, the first thing you see is a cup right here, but I'm not really seeing uh, the right side of the cup. Typically, in most cases, at least for myself, when I'm looking for a bullish, optimistic move for a stock, the right side of the cup definitely needs to be higher than the left side of the cup. So maybe if we go down a time frame, maybe... Let's see what we got. Okay, so we do have, I mean, even over here, this left cup is still higher than this right cup. Let's see. Uh, I mean, you could have a cup, left side of the cup here, right side of the cup, throwback. But then this right side of the cup does not get up to here which i think is a sign that uh the company something happened with the company we don't know if it was bad data bad earnings margins going down we're going to do some digging at the moment so uh the strength appears to be with the bears you could see it has gone from overbought now it's trending down got a nice little kick up right here but we can see for the month of october uh we're in November. For the month of November, we still have about, gosh, 14 days left. If this selling pressure does not head back to the upside, this is going to be a very bearish indicator here going into the rest of 2024, early 2025. Uh, our momentum here does signify a downtrend. However, again, if we do get buying volume to the upside here with LFMD, we could see this momentum flip, our strength flip up as well. And we go from 550 probably to $8 in the short term to midterm. Money flow is exiting, but we will double check that. And our relative momentum indicator, you can see it got nice and warm and now it's come back down. So overall, uh, it's kind of neutral. We're halfway through the month of November. Uh, we're already at... 10 million shares traded for November. October was 10.7. So November, if November's strength and volume exceeds October's to the upside, we could see a continued, uh, or we could see a bottom here. You could see the stock has been trending down for one, two, three, four, five, six. The stock has been going down for six months. We could have a bottom here at 550-ish, or I guess the true bottom would be like four. 428. So uh, let's go ahead and just check on what's going on here. This is absolutely beautiful. You want to see this go up and to the right. Sales, you want to see this go up and to the right. And what we have the fortune of seeing is 2023, they brought in 152 million. 2024, we're at $193 million. So that is fantastic. Uh, you could see Every year, they're adding some shares to the pool for the last few years. 2023, they had 38.26 million shares 
outstanding. 2024, we're at the same level. So they haven't added more shares this year, but you can see over time, as they add more shares to the pool, that essentially decreases the value of what exists. Um, so think of supply and demand. Supply continue to continues to increase and demand will be variable. So we can see that sales are uptaking very nicely. Gross margins, 84%. So every $100 they spend, they're getting $184 back. That is amazing. Sales past five years, 90%. That is good. You can see that is there is resiliency there because they were able to make it through the COVID. Uh, let's bring up our calculator. So income is going to be negative 25610000 I only include the market cap if it is over $1 billion. In this case, it is not. So we're going to leave it as is. Sales is $193,060,000. Okay. Before we go down, let's just take some peaks here. Quick ratio. We like to see that over 1. Debt not showing, so we're going to have to kind of look at that with a little bit more emphasis. Earnings per share next year really high. Uh, institutions are adding, insiders are adding, it looks like. Very low float stock. Finviz has this as a number one recommend, which is the highest you can get. So, very interesting. Looking at quarterly revenues, Q1 this year, they did 44 million. Q1 last year, 33. They spent about $700,000 more. Gross profit over ten million dollars more. Congrats to them. Q two they made fifty million revs compared to last year thirty five million. Gross profit going up as well. Uh, Q three fifty three million compared to last year fifty eight. Forty five million in gross profit. So this company is actually doing pretty well in terms of efficiencies. They're growing by almost double digits in gross profit. Uh. And they're also spending a little bit more, but it's paying off. Uh, net income, we want this to go down. So Q1 was negative 7 million compared to last year, negative 4 million. So that's an increase. That's not good. Q2 this year, negative 7.6 million compared to negative 7.5 million. This is a beautiful sign. Negative 5.9 million compared to negative 6.9 million. So that is positive. Slowly, very slowly, very slowly, but surely heading towards profitability. EPS on a recurring basis, all negative. However, Q3 this year is negative 0.14 compared to negative 0.2. Q2 to 2024 was negative 19 compared to negative 23. And Q1 was negative 19 compared to negative 14. It looks like they're slowly turning over a new leaf, starting with profits. Well, profits this year have been very good. Uh, also with net income and EPS. So things are looking good. Gross margins. Gross margins are also turning a new leaf as well. Look how it's gone from 83, 85, 84, 85, compared to 79, 82, 82, 82. This company's looking really good, mama. Okay, let's uh, continue our calculation. Sorry, getting distracted over here. Okay, uh, cash, they have 37590000 Debt, they have $19,460,000. All right, and let's just see. Cash, looks like cash is at all-time high. If we're looking back to Q4 2022. Total assets are doing very well. Total liabilities. See, that's the thing. Liabilities exceed assets here in this scenario. So that is not good. However, it does not appear that this company is in the same basket of companies that would typically be in danger. Um, they've got decent cash. They have great growing revenues. Um, they need to... They need to do a better job. They need to figure out their liability and asset equation here because it is not attractive. And it's very easy for a hit piece to come out, whether you've got, gosh, Heisenberg, Hindenburg, 
reports. You've got short sellers, very popular short sellers, easily could come out, release a bad story, and the data would back that up saying, hey, liabilities exceed assets here. This company's at risk of bankruptcy. Technically, they're not lying. When liabilities exceed assets, that spells trouble. It's going to take a little bit more of a savvier person, someone who can just read this and take into account discretion of other factors as well. So I don't like this, but it's not really a concern at the moment. Uh, we do want to now look at their quick ratio. You could see, okay, this is a this is a very positive thing. So a quick ratio over one, and here's our quick ratio. A quick ratio over one means they can pay off any debts, notes, liabilities, etc. Um, if it's under one, that means they're probably over leveraged. They cannot pay off all debts. They cannot pay off all loans. They cannot pay off all notes. No obligations. So you can see here they're actually improving. And we're looking again at the end of Q4 2022. You can see it trended from way over leveraged, scary, 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 improving, safe, safe fish, questionably safe questionably safe. So they're trending in the right direction in all major categories. In my opinion, we got the net income, EPS, gross margins, and uh, quick ratio. So this company is very, very slowly turning a new leaf. We got the chief innovation officer only buying $14,000 worth. That's not really enough to move the needle or convince me or savvy people that insiders are doing what's best here. Obviously, if they want to make a huge impact, we need the CEO to come out and buy a hundred thousand plus dollars worth. Uh, and that would be Justin Schreiber. So uh, overall, no real red flags down here, honestly. Going back to our calculation, we're now going to take this and divide it by three hundred and thirty-eight million two hundred sixty thousand. So we get a potential stock price of four dollars and eighty-five cents. Uh, the stock's at five forty nine. Target price is twelve dollars and seventy one cents. Um, do I believe that? We're gonna see. Uh, I do just want to check really quick where the trend is heading. Ah, there was a gap here, and this candle closed it. It looks like there's more pain coming the week of November 18th, starting the week of November 18th. Uh, my calculations indicate this is a little overvalued at the moment. Institutions own and hedge funds own 39%. That is old data. New data, they actually own 43%. And we can see that it's at all-time highs in terms of institutional and hedge fund ownership. I don't really need to zoom in to see that, so that is pretty key. Cool. All right, uh, Divasiadero Street Capital Management. I don't know why I read that like that. Divasiardo. Div Divisiardo. Divisiadero. Uh, they reduced 59%, and then BlackRock owns 2.4 million shares. Uh, Jane Street, they really don't know what's going to happen. They have a put, they have a call, they have a long position. <laughs> I love seeing that because honestly, it's true. No one really knows what a stock will ever do. Um, do they have earnings? They had earnings. Um, I mean, basically, my I don't even need to read the earnings to understand what's happening. They're slowly turning over a new leaf. Revenues, EPS, net income, profitability, quick ratio. They are making big improvements. And it's not really baked into the stock yet. Uh, Q3 was obviously fine. We have the data right here. So we don't need to read that report necessarily. They've got more cash on hand. They just need to fix this total assets and total liabilities issue they've got going on here. I think diving in a bit deeper on the stock charting is going to give us a better image of what we could expect. Um, I do not know when I 
charted this, but literally this is beautiful because it shows huge areas of buying. I don't know when the heck I bought this huge area of buying here. Um, so you, these, uh, I guess this is what my cycle brackets are. So these red brackets you see here, do, do, do big buying, big buying, big buying. I'm guessing we'll see some big buying coming in t February, 2027. I would trust that. Wow. Okay. So what we're going to do here. Low here was 114, 152, 140. So we're going to go back here. 114. Okay. Okay. You're asking yourself, why the heck did you just draw that? What is that? This is a Fibonacci arc. This is one of my most favorite patterns to look at on a longer time frame and exactly why is because we can ideally see where the potential stock price will go in the future based on how confident we are with the candles that are interacting with the fibonacci arcs on the downside so what i'm going to do is zoom in to show you We've got a lot of lines going here, but let's um, let's just see how well these candles are reacting. Over here, it's not very sensible because we're really zoomed in at the moment. Uh, but looking here, we can see perfect 10 out of 10 resistance here. You notice I made this pattern from the very high candle right in this area to right here. So all the data beforehand just goes to reinforce the level of confidence in this uh, tool that we're using this chart tool. So 10 out of 10 resistance here breaks up 10 out of 10 resistance. Again, it tries to break up. This is slightly perfect, almost perfect uh, where the candle ends. This next candle here, nine out of 10 resistance. It tries to break up. Then we see just a God candle just breaks through, through, through. Then we have our blow off top candle right here. My head is right in the way. Beautiful. Blow off top candle right here. Tests a great test of uh, resistance here. Support, sorry. Candle falls through. Seven out of 10 support. You can see the candle comes up. Next candle falls through, falls through. This one tries to break through. This next candle, beautiful test of resistance, a beautiful test of support. This next candle falls through. Now we go all the way down to our consolidated bottom. Look at this 10 out of 10 masterpiece kiss. This is like the kiss right here. And it says, hey, I still respect you. This candle's like, I still respect you. Want to say hello? Right there. And now we continue on with our life. And now we've got this uh, jibber jabber going on. So the level of confidence I have in this Fibonacci arc potentially predicting our uh, next high is very good. So uh, now what we need to do, and the reason we're looking a little bit deeper into this is because this company is actually turning a new leaf. They're actually looking very, very sexy in terms of business operations turning around, fundamentals. Uh, we want to see some more insider buying, but I think they see what we see, and I think they're probably waiting for a lower entry. So you're probably saying, okay, dude, what's that lower entry? Let me go ahead and tell you. I also just need to make sure that my, they're not. So the high was 33.02, low was 114.00. I need to make sure my technical patterns are snapping to the candles. So 3302, pretty close to here. Okay. Okay. Um, so now what we want to see, manipulation essentially. And you're saying, why do we want to see manipulation? Because we're already seeing it. 
this candle right here literally came up and tested this resistance perfectly. Whoever is manipulating this uh, company, they're doing a good job. This candle came up perfectly, touched it, kissed it, and now it's creating a very bearish candle right here. So the next area to watch is 373. And getting back into this high, strong buying area. So we're going to want to watch the first six months of 2025. Again, look at this area right here, this area right here, this area right here is a little elevated. Uh, so we want to see this area come. And then we've got February 2027. And the importance of that is because if you're like me, we like to get now we I like to get into positions about a year before they really take off. The main reason is for tax purposes. If we've got a company that's doing well, they're turning the business around. Efficiencies are being made at a deeper level. We can see the efficiencies being made. Uh, however, someone could write a short report of this company tomorrow saying the CEO doesn't trust the company because he's not buying. The insiders are not paying, not buying the stock. We've got a CIO, chief innovation officer, putting 15,000 in to really show some excitement. Asset or liabilities exceed assets. So there's a lot of uh, potential room to wiggle this one down. Um, we want to see this around threes, one to threes. Uh, my calculator says 485. So we want to see some very, very deep discounts happening. It can happen. Uh, we, it's just going to take patience. We want to see it get in this area and then starting to buy. I want to start to buy. Right here, probably I would even consider earlier February. This is our buy zone. So this is an area I feel comfortable buying. Uh, I mean, this is a $4.80 stock. They're getting better. Um, they should only really become stronger. The funny thing is, you know, I don't like... The stock market is very manipulated. Uh, look at this stock around 2021. Obviously, that was a huge melt-up. Look at their sales in 2021. 92 million. We're now at 193 million. We're double that over double that and the stock is trading at five bucks and again 2020 early 2024 2023 the stock was trading at like 10 bucks and we're doing much better than we were now so it just goes to show um manipulation and also just waiting for being patient waiting for the opportunity to come to you it'll happen slowly people will be upset and say dude you're not looking at their products coming out of the pipeline you're not looking at future services the total adjustable market i'm just like dude everything we need to know is baked into the charts and the data we have now so this is obviously a wait and see at the moment um yeah Wait and see, give it a few, give it at least six months. Again, this is my buy area. And then we see typically a large purchase area here. Um, I think ideally, even if we're waiting a little bit longer, waiting till the end of 2028 when it's fully out of this Fibonacci arc cycle, because it's likely to be held down for a while. Um, so again, just, monitoring this company and just seeing if they're continuing to prove uh quarter over quarter so that's all i got uh again very desirable stock gonna be around a dollar to three dollars and if you can if you have a long-term mindset just dollar cost average over time uh it's you've got time on this one i think 2028 is when it's really gonna bloom out you'll see spikes you know you'll see some good spikes but um just patience and uh, just waiting for this Fibonacci cycle to play out. So that's literally I've got. If you made it this far, consider subscribing, leaving a comment, a thumbs up. Have yourself a great day. Goodbye.